Okay, so today I am going to be demonstrating my computer to everybody. It is an 8-bit computer with 8-bit adder, and that's an 8-bit ALU. It doesn't have any other possible ALU things, and it has uh, 18 bits of memory or RAM uh, in 9-bit in segments, and then I cross over each other, and I'll show you that later. And it's, it's very simple, it's much smaller than the Internet for the Winds, and it's, um, it's not nearly done yet. I'm just showing you what it can do right now, because what it is right now is it's just basically the bone structure of what a computer normally is. And uh, by the way, I'm recording this, I'm commentating this over the video that I did, so the um, information might be a little off, but here I go. Okay, so here's my computer. I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like from the top, basically, for what it looks from above. It's pretty big, pretty imposing, but, you know, well, like I said, it's not super big. I plan to add more in the future. Okay, so, starting off, we get up here. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And I go a little bit too high, so I break down a block right there. And so this is my computer. That's the entire thing. Over there we have the start of the adders. The adders are the ALU of the computer and basically what does all the arithmetic. And it goes all the way around there and down to there. And then along here, right starting right there, we have eight, nine bits of RAM. And then the rest of it is not behind that. And then right here we have another nine bits of RAM. Uh, I don't remember what I was trying to point out right now, but uh, this is all um, buses that uh, carry the information that are, that's held in the RAM and output it to all over the computer. They're extremely huge. Um, it's actually quite funny. The uh, buses take up much more room than any of the actual computing parts do. So you can see here the buses go out, they go over, and they go to the ALU all over the place. The same thing happens from the other nine bits of RAM, um, but that's not as easy to see because those are mostly just lines of um, redstone on the ground. They're not raised. As an interesting side note, I decided to color everything to make it much easier to see the progression that I went through. I don't remember the color where I started with. I do remember that we ended with green, but it was just an easier way and an interesting way to look at it. Right here we have um, the red things right there uh, are buses that head uh, towards the um, uh, muxers, and muxers are basically tell the computer to input or output certain commands that are in the uh, ALU and output them to the air. Right here we have my newest thing, which is my uh, vertical dis uh, visual display. It is not completed yet, so the outputs will not be corrected. But the re reason we know it's the newest thing is because I still have green, and right there is there's green. Um, in this video, I will be demonstrating the visu visual display, but I'll have you know that it is not correct yet, and it's easy to see it has plenty of flaws. But um, if you understand how to read it, it, it works okay. But really, I need to wait for it to, I need to do a couple fixing, and that'll be what I do next. I'll keep updating. Okay, so right now, this is a carry-in. It just basically adds a 1 to whatever is in the place. It's nothing else, but it's just a 1. It adds it to the ALU. So now we have a 1 in the ALU. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 1 and put it into R2. R2 is the, R is the bank right over there that you can see. Right there. And then, um, so what we're doing is we're taking that one, whatever's in the ALU, which is one, and putting it into R2. So we're loading that into R2. R2 will show up on the vertical, I mean the visual display. As we can see, that's a one. Um, now what we can do is we can load whatever's in R2 and whatever's in the carry-in and the carry-in together, which is 1 plus 1, it's 2. So what we're loading is 2 into R2. And so basically, you can see that it flips there until it turns to 2, 
and out there we see a 2. Then we can do the same thing, add 2 plus 1, and we get 3. And uh, that's about the most I can go with that. It just adds 1 continually, and it, it, there's applications, but I won't show them here. What's a little more interesting is um, uh, 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 what I'm going to do now, the Fibonacci sequence. So what I just did there is I zeroed it out. That zeroes everything, and it makes it so I remove all the stuff. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Fibonacci sequence. So first of all, I'm going to input into R2, and then I'm going to um, take that input and move it to R1, and then add those two, and then I'll keep switching them, and basically it creates the Fibonacci sequence. Sorry, my mom's uh, walking upstairs. So what I'm doing now is I'm loading what's in R2, which is 1, into R1. So I have 2 in R1 and 1 in R2. Okay, let me in here. Um, sorry, my mom's trying to ruin my video. Uh, so I have a 1 and a 2. The 2 is up there, and the 1 is down there, and I know that's not how you're supposed to have a visual display. I'll but give you 5 minutes. Um, and then... Uh, so, I have a 2 in the, the other one and a 1 in this one. I don't need to carry in anymore because I'm only adding 2, not 3. So, 2 inputs, not 3 inputs. So, now I'm uh, switching back to R2. So, I'm adding 2 and 3, which is 5. And I'll be doing that right now. So, now I'm adding 5. So, that'll display there. Oh, no, I'm adding 2 plus 1 is 3. Excuse me. I'm sorry. So, 2 plus 1 is 3. I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, and it doesn't look any different because that's really three that time. That's how it's supposed to look in originally. But as I said, my version of visual display is just being stupid uh, right now. Um, so now I'm adding three and two because uh, three is in there and two is in R1. That's R1. So I'm add adding three and two and the output should be five. I uh, will show you that when I get to it. Um, so that... So now we load 5, right? So you can see we have 5 there. That's 4 and 1. 4 and 1 is 5. But we also have 3, I mean 2 and 1, which is 3, because we have it for the R1. Now here's a quick... Uh, no, no, not yet, I guess. Okay, so um, now we're going to load 5 plus 3 is 8. So there's 8, and there's 5 for our... 2 and R, I mean R1 and 8. Yeah, sorry, I'm still getting used to this stuff. Okay, <clears throat> and then um, so in R1, we are going to flip that and it'll come out as 9, and that is not how it's supposed to be. Obviously, I have, a, I have an error in my system, and I'm not going to deny that there are some bugs to work out. Uh, actually, there's a lot of bugs to work out, but they're slowly being worked out and everything's working out. And, I will keep you guys updated and maybe I will do a video on how to build an ALU, a simple ALU. Because because it's they're actually really short, it's the rest of it that takes long. And eventually I'm going to add a uh, a bunch of ROM over there that connects directly to these inputs. And so basically I can program my computer. Right now my ROM is my head, which is fine. But it doesn't mean I have pro problems. So yeah, and, and next I'm going to be fixing my visual display as you can see. And that's about it. And so, yeah, key, I'll keep you posted.